All right, folks, the music has ended. The intro is over. That can mean one thing. You're back with the Boombastic cast boys doing it very Boombastic. We're glad you all woke up early on a Saturday morning because, boy, do we have a treat for y'all this morning. Huh? It's a beautiful thing. The great Samantha Newark. Maybe you heard of a cartoon called Gem in the Holograms. Maybe you kind of grew up with that. Maybe, you know, maybe you're, if you're if you're if you're somebody like us, you're in love. You're in love with the with the character. Now you're about to be in love with the person for crying out loud. You know what I mean? She's done all types of stuff. Um, video games, you know, she's got the, the voice of an angel. You know what I'm saying? She's got the video games, the cartoons. She was in Transformers as well. All over the place. You know what I mean? Um, summer camp nightmare kid classic horror that i get down with i don't know if the hawkman ever got down with it but i'm more of the horror guy on the show um, hey, hey 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 i'm still learning i'm still learning i'm catching that's all, up that's all that matters brother that's all that matters you know what i mean but yeah this is going to be a fun episode we should almost air this on a saturday morning because it's just got that vibe to it you know it's very cool um but hell yeah you know uh let's just pop into the episode you know what i mean there's a lot of cool stuff to be talked about here and now we hope you enjoy the the episode i know we enjoyed making it for you so uh with that being said no further ado for the first time to the boom Bastacast, cast we welcome the super talented lovely samantha newark samantha welcome to the boom cast Thank you. It's lovely to be here with you guys. <laughs> Very lovely to have you. Royalty up in here, you know what I mean? It's a beautiful thing. Oh, that's so, so lovely to have been a part of something that, that meant something to your childhood, you know? Yeah. How, how cool is that? I had no idea when I was doing the show <laughs> that I'd be getting to chat with you lovely people all these years later. <laughs> well, we know that's why you got into the biz, so you could talk to us one day, you know what I mean? Hey, you know, it was on my list. <laughs> and that, mean, that means a lot to the both of us, you know what I mean? Check off the bucket list. Exactly. You know? Right. Tick. <laughs> so, it, it's very cool having you here, you know what I mean? Um, we usually start from the beginning, the best place to start, you know what I mean? Right. You were originally born in the UK over there in London, right? Right, across the pond, right. Yeah. I, used to, I used to talk funny when I got here, and that was not very cool in, in, when you were 10. I, I came here when I was 10, and I remember my sister and I had a really hard time in school because it was not cool uh, to be so different, you know, when we were little. I think it would have been great in high school, but not in, uh, not in elementary school. They didn't like my sister and I, and uh, so we tried to um, adapt as kids do, you know, like learn to talk like you guys. And uh, the unfortunate thing for me was my dad, I was singing professionally and my dad was my manager and he thought that it made me stand out to have a British accent. So he was rallying for me to keep it. And I was desperately trying to fit in, you know? So it's like, yeah, but your career, but dad, I'm getting, you know, chased after school. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. How, how hard did you find to lose it? Because I know we are. There's a lot of like performers that like Christian Bale automatically pops into my mind. Where like he right. does a lot of American accented stuff, and then you see him in the behind the scenes interview, and he's back to the whales type accent. You know what I mean? Totally. Yeah. I mean, I've been here long enough now that um that it's it's natural for me to speak like this. But uh, it didn't take very long to to fit in. And I think that's, you know, I think a lot of us actors are kind of chameleons in that way. Um, you know, you just learn to kind of walk into a million different situations and 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 acclimate yourself, you know. Yeah. So it, it was good training, although I didn't realize it at the time. But yeah, yeah but it's I funny, don't... like fans, gem fans, um, yeah, gem fans along the, the way have said that they can kind of hear Maybe it's because I pronounce my words clearly, more clearly than some. They're like, I can kind of hear it. <laughs> but, well, yeah, like I said, we're from Boston, so our accents always kill us. People you know, <laughs> yeah, they hate right. it. You know what yeah, I mean? I love the Boston accent. Boston, the New York. and I think it's, I love it. I think it's so cool. 
We have the East Coast on lockdown. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> yeah. In fact, when I when I first came to America and I was sitting in the airport, uh, we arrived the day that Jimmy Carter was getting inaugurated. It was in a snowstorm. My poor parents had to go, like, go find a hotel in, in Washington, D.C. It was insane. And I just remember hearing some random stranger speaking, and I was completely blown away that they, because I thought American accents were only in the movies. Yeah, and yeah. then suddenly it was all around me, and I was so confused. You know, I don't know where I came up with that I, idea as a kid, but yeah, I thought, thought you all only spoke like that in the movies. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a, it's a, the first time I left Massachusetts. I remember I went to New York. Was the first anywhere else I went, and they were like they picked up on it like that. And like being from here, you never even realize you do it. You know what right. I mean? But they're like, you're from Boston. <laughs> yeah, they're like you're from Boston. Right. And I'm like, yeah. Right. <laughs> Yeah. Right. And then my, my, I mostly grew up in California where we don't really have an accent. You know, it's kind mm -hmm. of a, what is it? A California accent? I don't know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. It, it, it's funny. Yeah, California is that way. I think it's because there's so many different, you know, folks come going there for the deal, you know. Right. Exactly. It's kind of a hodgepodge of everything. Yeah. Although I, I was, um, I guess I was a Valley girl because I grew up in the San Fernando Valley during the 80s when that song came out and actually uh moon unit zappa and dweezil came to my 16th birthday party oh, so i was like cool. in the mecca of the uh i was the valley girl that's yeah. the yeah yeah i, I love <laughs> like and that was like 80s i'm assuming right oh yeah so yeah, yeah like i love the, the 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 mixing and matching of all that just that lifestyle you know we have people on a sh on the show before that have grew up in california and I was yeah. very, I was very naive when I was like, well, I almost feel like, isn't everybody attempting to be actors in California? But it's like right. such a, it's such a, a disconnect with certain people, you know, they don't, they don't want to get into it. Some people do, you know, right. I mean? the business. Right. Wise, it's, yeah. yeah, it's funny that it's because I live in Nashville now, Nashville, Tennessee, and, you know, in California, they say, you know, the person behind you at Starbucks that looks like George Clooney, it's George Clooney, you know because you the la you know it's, it's similar here but it's all music industry related here so it's funny everybody's the songwriter everybody's a musician and in la it's like oh let me guess you're an actor that yeah. waits table <laughs> you know? yeah. yeah it's the same thing so you guys you guys made the commute over for entertainment entertainment uh plans right it was one of them deals so you, you mean doing, to america yeah to america to yeah well um, same thing like, you know it, not really it was I guess a mixed right, bag. yeah because yeah, i was in england <laughs> um and then we we actually immigrated to rhodesia in south africa and we were there for like three years and then it was getting pretty scary out there so we um came back to england and then my uncle lived in the states and he sponsored us so we came over got green cards um all together as a family and started off in virginia northern virginia and then I had, I was signed to a big agency at the time I was signed to ICM and my agent there said, you know, you either need to move to New York or you need to move to Los Angeles because that's, you know, those are the meccas and we opted to go to LA. So I'm glad we did. I mean, I, I love New York, but, but uh, I can only kind of take New York for a few days. Right. <laughs> I'm, I'm a little more laid back. So I think LA was a good fit. Yeah. yeah it's very fast paced in New York. Yeah, it's crazy there. It's wild. It's uh Yeah, I remember like I said that was the first place I went and it was kind of like an eye eye opening thing, you know what I mean? Cuz you know, the, yeah. the, the, whole, the momentum of everything over there is so everything's so quick, you know what I mean? It's just so quick and so many people all yeah. together, you know, everybody in LA is like driving in their cars. It's such a different different vibe but yeah i love new york i i have um two brothers from another mother uh, my my boys that live in new jersey and um actually i went out there for my birthday a couple of years ago and it was great and we came up through the subway system and it was like the middle of gay pride and it was so wild and the trains were packed and i was like wow new york is awesome it was, yeah. it was good yeah I remember hearing people, uh, they'd be like, oh, people are mean in New York, but I found New York people way nicer than Massachusetts people. You know what I mean? Really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I imagine, I mean, I've heard like they're just, they're super honest, you know, yeah. in LA, it's, it's kind of different, 
not to like yeah. rag on LA, but it's like, yes, love you, call you. you A little know, softer. It's... <laughs> Actually, it's kind of funny because um, I uh, I was on on a, a set with this guy who uh, was a stage combat um, um, guy, and he's from New York, and he <laughs> said, the thing is, uh, he said New Yorkers are kind but not nice, and Californians. Are nice but not kind. And not kind. That it, you know, that rings. And and, and 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 I was like, what, what what are you talking about? He says, well, you said you know in New York you break down on the side of the road, you know, a New Yorker stops says, what's wrong with you, you dumb asshole? How come you don't know how to fix a car? And <laughs> Did then you not put gas in your car? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then they help you, and they they yeah. they kind, and they help you get the car going. But in yeah. L.A., it's kind of like. Oh, I would love to help you, but you know, I I got this thing I gotta do. I can't help you. Well, you know, good luck. Wish you the best. You know, you're in your you're in LA. You're paying your dues. You're. Yeah. I remember like taking buses to go to voiceover jobs and yeah. uh, parking far. Not parking. Um, getting there and just saying no. I, I parked really far away because <laughs> I didn't have a car. You know, I didn't want yeah. people to know. <laughs> but yeah, you you learn who your friends are when yeah. you know you're you're going to rehearsal carrying your guitar and they're like, yeah, I saw you walking up Crescent Heights and you're like, you saw me. Th you didn't think to stop. Like maybe I had like four more miles to walk and like what? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Just, yeah. It's it's a it's a thing. Yeah. yeah, but I, I've, I, you know, it's, it's like a love hate relationship with LA. I have so many amazing memories. Um, I mean, my, you know, I grew up there. Like it's, it's, there's a memory on every, every uh, newsstand and corner and restaurant and all these, you know, things, the landmarks and stuff that are meaningful. But, uh, but it's a very tough place to live. Yeah, a very tough place to live. And I was, I was happy to leave. I was ready to leave. So, yeah. I still have a ton of family there, but it's a, yeah, it's a, the weather's nice. You know what I mean? It's beautiful. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah. a lot to live up to. Also, it's like oh. oh, especially if you're like a songwriter and you want to get in like these pensive kind of moods, and it's like oh, it's eighty and sunny again. It's like I can't, I can't live up to that. Like I, I need some some polarity in the weather, you know? That's very. That's what New England is for. Well, <laughs> that's that true. Is yeah that is a very interesting point that you said there yeah like if you're when you're making music it's like all that good weather it's like you got that it's all happy type feel but if you wanted to maybe go a little darker or something right. the vibe you know what i mean yeah i mean when there's a thunderstorm everybody literally drives to the top of uh mulholland so they can watch the lightning because it's like you just don't see it although they've been getting a lot of crazy weather there but yeah it's like it's a thing there's not much weather <laughs> so so when you first said california was was your was the ambition strictly the music thing or was it i know you said you were doing the voiceover yeah. uh, auditions and stuff was it a strictly music right. at first or how did it was yeah because the uh the voiceover thing didn't really start to happen until i was in my late teens um I'd never done a voiceover. I was auditioning for commercials. I was booking commercials, you know, McDonald's and Payless Shoes and things like that. And I was auditioning for soaps. I screen tested for Days of Our Lives. I, you know, um, screen tested for Little House on the Prairie. Uh, I was real super close to getting uh, Mallory on Family Ties. Like that was the time frame. Yeah. Audition for Facts of Life. Um, yeah, and it wasn't until I, one day my agent called and said, we have an audition for an animated series. And I was like, you, for like to be a cartoon? And they were like, yeah, yeah, to be a cartoon. She's a rock star. And I was like, oh my gosh, she sings, that's amazing. And I kind of thought that's why I got the audition because they knew that I sang. But it turns out that the, uh, the music was all this big machine that was already in production in New York. And they were casting the voiceover actors to match the singing counterparts and none of us knew that at the time we just knew we were auditioning for a cartoon that was music driven that's pretty much all we knew and uh yeah Got who it. knew i would i would get the lead in it yeah i mean i think <laughs> i figured your music background would have played a part into the audition process of it but if they already had a role out, yeah yeah, that's what I thought. And I know there are a lot of um, voice actors that sing and there were their cast members that also sang. But yeah, we we never we never even met any of the music side of 
things until um, there's a Comic Con called Gem Con that's been going now for about 17 years. And it's the diehard fans. They fly in from all over the world. It's a different city every year. And uh, they, over the years, have done an incredible job bringing the music counterparts together with the voice actors. So we've all like been able to meet each other, all the creatives from you know all the different sides of Gem. When, when you're reading for like a voiceover thing, I assume, is it the same thing as if you were doing like a live action thing or is it is there any different type uh, of setup? You, you're just going to go in there and read for the producers in front of at a table or is it uh, they bring you to a studio so, first off? Right. Well, Jem, um, it was just myself in a booth and Wally was the director, Wally Bird, the director who directed like thousands of, of uh, cartoons. Yeah. Um amazing amazing director what an incredible time for animation i mean my god i didn't realize at the time that i just landed in the mecca of like the most incredible animation that was going uh so yeah i auditioned um with wally for wally and it was just me in the studio and i left and i and i remember i couldn't really take the temperature of it i was i couldn't you know i couldn't gauge whether i'd done a good job or not and I'd been on enough auditions to just have to go, oh, well, you know, oh, well, we'll see what happens and let it go. And that's what you have to do. Otherwise, you turn into a complete crazy person. So you can't be attached. You just got to go on to the next thing. Yeah. And then I, I ended up um, getting the job and which didn't feel like a job. It, I just landed amongst the most amazing voice talent that I could have ever dreamed to have worked with, you know, Charlie Adler and Townsend Coleman and Sue Blue and Patricia Albrecht and Bobby Block. Well, Bobby Block, Samantha Paris now, but all of these incredible voice talents, Kathy Ann Bloor. And, uh, and then we recorded ensemble, which was what a gift that was. That was kind of like, like live radio almost you know where we're sharing mics and we're literally recording together so that that doesn't happen hardly ever <laughs> so yeah. I was really really lucky to get to do that I was going to ask about that because I was always curious you know I, I assume when it's studio whenever I think of a groups in there I think of like when bands go in and they're doing like the chorus or they're doing you know like the we are the world or something you know what I mean <laughs> yeah uh, but that's cool that the, they they all had you in there. And um, do they do table reads and stuff like that leading into it? I, or Yeah, we, we go and sit in a big conference table and Wally would be there and we'd be given our storyboards, which were, and I wish I kept a storyboard. I never did. I've kept a lot of the scripts and stuff like that, but I never kept a storyboard. But it's the action pictures that go with the scene. So I know what the action is mm -hmm. and I have a better idea of the delivery of the line so yeah we do we go through the scripts um all together at a table read through it underline our parts make notes you know while we give direction and notes and so i have a lot of notes on my scripts and uh yeah and then we'd go we go in and knock it out and it it's old school i mean now I'm sure you'd have like a video video monitor system yeah. where you could actually see what was going on in there. But back in the day, it was a speaker. And if you weren't in the scenes and there weren't enough mics, I'd have to, you know, I'd go in the back room was like a waiting area and yeah. you'd listen and you'd follow along with your script. And you're like, OK, I got to go back in there in two pages or whatever. And then you go back in because we were sharing mics in a very small studio, Wally Burr Studios in Burbank on Hollywood Way. I mean, a great place. You think of the animation that was done there. It's like yeah. a real estate office now, sadly. But the building is <laughs> yeah. still there. Yeah. Yeah. And, the, and then they're doing the animation at the same time? Or is that something where, like, how's that kind mm -hmm. of play into it? It's the animation, I guess, was done, well, was done separately. Uh, I think that it was done after we did our voices. You know, I should know this. The fans know so much more. <laughs> Yeah. than I do um yeah but somehow it was all, all done separately and somehow it all seamlessly came together and uh I remember the first time I like got up in the morning mm. because kids that didn't grow up in the 80s you had to like get up and watch watch yes <laughs> watch it otherwise you would miss it right and there was no you know recording it or DVRs or, or or streaming it like that didn't exist so, yeah. so you you had to be like invested right. which I love you're really invested in it so you had to 
be there when it came on and uh or you'd miss it so but i remember getting up one morning and watching it and seeing the theme song which still gives me chills to this day i think it's one of the best theme songs ever and i didn't realize for some reason you know i didn't realize that that it had music videos like and like MTV with like Gem and the Holograms, who is he kissing? And then the, I, I didn't realize that's what they were doing until I actually saw the show. And I was like, oh my God, I get it. This is so cool. Yeah, so. That, that's why I brought up the, I, I know that they're not like drawing it in the room with you guys, but I was always right. curious of like, do they let you see it beforehand or do they take your your voice and then they mold the animation around your voice, you know what I mean? Like, so right. it's e- easier to sync where as opposed to you having to watch it and be like, okay, I got this amount of time to say this thing, you know what I mean? Right, more... we, w- we weren't um, we weren't looping, we weren't doing anything to picture. Yeah. Uh, so it was all done separately. So um, yeah, and I do remember when I went into audition, they had uh, Xerox copies of, our, of all the characters up on the walls and you know, it was it was during the time when the Sunset Strip was blowing up, like Guns and Roses and Poison and all of that. And I was still too young to get in the bars. I was like 18. Yeah. But literally, like that's the fashion and those the big spiky hair and the and the clothes and all of that stuff. Like we were literally, my friends and I would be cruising Sunset, you know, wishing we could get in the clubs, looking at all these kids. The older kids like going into the clubs and dress like that and then when I went into the audition like that's what I saw these drawings these black and white drawings that were on the I'm like wow so this is like they're capturing what's going on right now with MTV and the whole scene you know so it's it's a, such a time capsule for the 80s it really genuinely is sure. so exciting yeah the um, I know like with a regular live action TV show, sometimes they'll do just the pilot. Sometimes they'll do like three episodes. Did they green light the whole season or how did that cut? How'd that work? I think that they green lit. I think it was 13 episodes. It might have been. I know they were abbreviated. Maybe it was like 15, 15 minute things that actually ended up turning into something more as as i said before the fans they know the breakdowns of all that stuff because they've researched it but i don't quite remember but i do remember when we got picked up and it's usually for 13 more episodes and another 13 this from what i remember that's how they did it and we did 65 65 episodes hell yeah yeah i had a lot of storytelling (laughs) <laughs> and there was more there was more to 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 come like christy marks who created gem had so many amazing ideas like she had apparently created a nemesis for the character synergy mm-hmm. like a dark ai that was going to you know rival synergy and i mean all these great great ideas that uh sadly you know the show ended and more doesn't get to do it but yeah <laughs> yeah the, the- do you remember like the pop of when you you realized oh this is this is a hit this is working people are liking this do you remember that jump you know i don't it's so strange i remember getting fan mail and i remember the work just kept coming so i knew that we were doing something good um but i mean i was like 18 and i had just gotten my own apartment and i was just starting to like my independence, you know, Jem yeah. availed me an entrance into to being an independent young lady like that. And so I don't, it, it kind of is sad that we didn't have social media back then. And in so many ways, I'm glad we didn't because I love the way I grew up, but, yeah. but there was no way to take a real time temperature of it. Right. How would we know, you know? And I don't think I really had the concept that my voice was being beamed out to millions of kids. like. It didn't, I don't know where the disconnect was, but I was a kid myself, you know, yeah. so I wasn't really thinking in those terms. And and I loved that I was, I was more, I guess, invested in, I loved the work. I loved being around these other actors and I was making money doing something that I loved. I was, I actually was uh, hired and can get my own apartment and my own car. And so I was just starting to live my life, you yeah. know, and going on other auditions. Yeah. Did it have like an abrupt cancellation 
And I'm not saying that in any rude way. I know there's, there's no. I, love, I love the show. And there's plenty yeah. of shows that like Married with Children was like on top of its game when they pulled that, you know what I mean? So yeah. it's like, there's really no rhyme or reason ever to things going away. But was there like an abrupt, I, weird ending to it for you guys? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I do kind of remember it ending abruptly and like, it just was strange. Uh, there was no, <laughs> you just, uh, you just didn't come back, you know? Yeah. It's so strange when they do that. I mean, that is such a microcosm of show business. It It is brutal and ruthless in that way. You know, there's no, um, but I do remember when we started the show uh, and I still have the invitation for it. There was a huge party for the release of the show for the green light, I guess. So we hadn't started recording yet, but uh, it was a gem party and sister sledge was like the the talent that was performing and it was this this huge hotel banquet dinner and um and it was to launch the show and i remember going to that so that was pretty cool but i mean i had no idea really what i was stepping into you know it's it, looking back i was just kind of like i don't know what this is gonna look like but i guess i got this this animated gig and who'd have thought you know, who'd have thought that it would like cross over into this pop culture, such a beloved show with like Transformers and G.I. Joe and be a part of that, that, you know, that umbrella of shows that really just uh, kids, kids loved. And now the grown up 80s kids still love. Sure. <laughs> Pretty yeah, amazing. Like they they rebooted it a couple of years back too. I remember, and you you played a, a, the hairdresser part in that. I think, right? Yes, I did. It's so funny. I still talk to to fans, uh, and and they're like, "You should have been in that movie." And I was like, "I I was in that movie," and they were like, "Oh, well, I've never seen it." <laughs> yeah, it was it was it was sad. The tra I think with the film, the trailer didn't show anything remotely that resembled the gem that they grew up with, and right. they and that was probably a bad idea to not give the fans something yeah. um i think because because the the emails that i were getting was like no holographic technology no no uh no synergy no misfits hmm. and i toured the misfits set and i knew there were misfits and i remember sitting at lunch with john chu going please tell me that that they're the misfits or you're gonna have misfits and he's like you can't have jam without the misfits i was like oh thank god but i couldn't say anything because i was on under a non-disclosure yeah and then i saw the hate train start on twitter and william shatner's even tweeting you know what no gem star earrings no synergy and i was like <laughs> yeah. oh my god there's nothing i could do they're killing it before it even gets out of the gate so i mean what having the having the shatner have a comment is quite a compliment in itself <laughs> you know what i mean I remember the I, I remember the reboot getting hate. I mean, I I kept I were, I was yeah. like waiting for the reboot to happen because at that time they were like everything was starting up again. You know, Transformers was starting up. Even GI yeah. Joe was getting a second run with the theatrical yeah. stuff. Maybe if they'd gone more like Spice Girls, super campy, like over the top, you know bunch of drag queens in it and kept it in the 80s yeah but i mean it's it's so hard to reboot something that's that's so precious to fans i mean they had like a visceral <laughs> emotional yeah. reaction they have such attachment to the show that i understand you know it's it's hard it's hard to hard to redo it it's our childhood it's like taking our toys away you know what i mean it's yeah you know what i mean totally yep i remember when they changed the voice of um of Fred Flintstone, I think it was growing up. And I was, mm. poor, I was, I was like, they can't do that. Like right. what happened? Yeah. Uh, I just want to uh, say that one thing I always find interesting is when they decide to reboot uh, like gems of GI Joe and all that. I mean, you have such a, the reason they're doing it is because of the fan base. They're doing it because they know yes. that people love it. They know people want to go and see it again. But I always can't wrap my mind around it. It's like you, you, the whole purpose of you doing it is to bring in the fans, but you, you don't make it so the fans want or be happy with it. I mean, they, right. they want to tinker with it, they want to change it. And it's like, we know that your basic thing, the reason you're doing it is you want to make a lot of money. And the way mm -hmm. you do that is bring in the fans. But when you don't, 
cater to the fans, cater to the people who right. want to see this. Yeah. It's, it's mind blowing to me because it's like shooting yourself in the foot. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I I completely understand. I mean, yeah. the girls were so lovely. Like the girls were so talented, and and Juliet Lewis. Oh my God! Like I'm such a fan of Juliet Lewis, and she was hilarious, and she was great in it. But yeah, there wasn't enough that was familiar. The you know they went they went so far in another direction that that they lost they lost the fans. So yeah, I don't know. Maybe if they'd done something animated. Um, maybe based on the comic books because i loved the comic books i thought they did a great job with that and yeah. the yeah. the uh the art for the comic books was just beautiful and how they read and they reimagined the characters i was like wow this is gorgeous so and then hired all of us because everybody the fans i meet them at shows and they're like god you sound you sound the same you know so yeah. <clears throat> they hired some of the original actors but um I don't know. That's showbiz. <laughs> that is showbiz. Yeah, it's stuff like it's that. Yeah. You know, and you were also a part of the Transformer. Um, yeah, you know what's funny is I just saw the trailer for the new um, the new Transformers film that's coming out in September, mm -hmm. and with Alita One, Scarlett Johansson playing Alita One, and obviously Ariel yeah. transforms into Alita One, and then Orion Pax is there, and I'm like, oh my god, I wonder if they'll do a nod to Ariel at all in this yeah. film who knows um i'll have to go see it that'd be cool yeah, yeah. You, know? <laughs> you know with gem gem was really ahead of its time with um because it was uh it was uh the, the the plot for anybody out there that doesn't know the plot's kind of like a, mu a music executive that becomes a rock star using these holograms for the band and stuff like that and mm -hmm. uh what's your being a music person as well what's your take on how um they're starting to use hologram musicians like Tupac. I think they did an Elvis or something like that. Right. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I've mixed feelings about that because obviously oh, those, those labels, I mean, they own you even after you're yeah. gone. It's like, good Lord. They, you know, it's just yeah. weird. It's, it's very weird. So in a way it's kind of disturbing, yeah. but also, it, but also it's fascinating i mean i i feel like if everybody's on board it's kind of cool it's it's kinda, i mean i'm i'm constantly amazed by technology and i remember going to see one of the transformers uh films and i was like i really i really felt like i dated myself because i was just like i had never seen anything like it the cgi and the, the just the it was so unbelievable to me because i mean i came from like pong <laughs> and Atari and Miss Pac-Man and and you know the the films that we used to see back in the 80s and suddenly it's just gone just unbelievable the technology they have and you get some seven-year-old and they'll be like yeah I've seen that like you know whatever like it doesn't impress them it's like how, yeah. how could that not impress you it's, it's wild yeah. different generation but um yeah, I mean, I guess it was bound to happen. So Jem was very ahead of her time. Yeah. So if she wanted to go on tour now, she could. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Just, Although just... the music seems to be tied up in some kind of crazy, uh, crazy problematic licensing hell. <laughs> I don't know what's yeah. going on. Uh, you see, like, there's a there's a cult film called um, The Holy Mountain. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but it's uh -huh. a... Alejandro Hodorowski made this movie and it's like this really art house film about like the cycles of life. And uh, because it was arts, he had caught the eye of John Lennon back in the day. So he was involved with getting the music into the film. It's not his music, but he was right. like involved with it. And because of that, it to re-release it, it took forever because they had to get clearances on all the music again because they lost. Yeah. yeah. They lost the licensing. They lost and... the licensing to it. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. I mean, because when I mean Sony was involved in the Gem movie, and I'm thinking, gosh, you know, if they couldn't even get the original music yeah. sorted out, um, then <laughs> it's probably not going to happen. Yeah. So, yeah. I know right now, like a big thing in the music biz is like they're getting people to sign over their catalogs before they pass away. Like yeah. I think Springsteen did it, and like other people, they go, <laughs> "Well, I'll just take a small." 
lump of like what I would be getting if I was alive. I'll just take like a big lump sum of it now and just sell it. And I think and sell it. Yeah. I think that's where we're going with hologram stuff. I think it's so we can always have bruises. So you know, in, in mean, perpetuity they can use yeah. your, your likeness. It's yeah. I I don't know. It's it's very strange. <laughs> we're strange times we're in, right? And and we've never been here before. So <laughs> yeah. knowing how to navigate it i mean the contracts are gonna i'm sure they're already you know having to cover and anything else that will be invented in 10 years or 20 years because who'd have thought yeah who'd have thought we'd be here i mean like all these new artists that we have i think nowadays if you're gonna make music it might be one of the best times even with film will people say too because it's so easy so to speak and in, in, in the sense of you can make a song on your, you could like go on your laptop and yeah. make a song. So I think yeah. that the newer artists now, they, the contracts that they're signing are probably horrifying where it's like they are. Give us everything. You don't even, you don't even have your, you don't own it at any step of this process. You never own it. Right. Indie all the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Indeed, That's all the way. I mean, because yeah. so much has changed. It's really beautiful. I remember, I remember kind of kicking and screaming when the internet came out. I didn't want to learn email. I didn't want to, right. I didn't, you know, I was like, ah, what is this? I'm not, I'm right. I'm too right brain for this. Yeah. But little old me didn't even realize like the, the amazing advantages, you know, um, to being able to craft out your own little niche and find your own fan base and, you know, bypass the gatekeepers. I mean, obviously that probably will always exist in some way, the yes. global superstardom world. But I love now that artists can just be like, yeah, thank you very much. Don't need you. You yeah. know, I've got my fans. I'm doing it myself. And, yeah. you know, that's lovely. That's, that's, you know, you own your music, you own your publishing, you, you own your create creative world. And yeah. um, that's, beautiful so I, i'm all about that yeah well i mean i mean the thing is that uh, i mean us being independent artists ourselves and all that that i mean we we have friends that they do a film and they like uh, sign up for a distributor and they get like nothing from it and you know yeah. up and streaming and and all that and it's it's just horrendous what happens when you know i mean you're the one creating this without you mm -hmm. there's nothing to sell exactly yet, yet you know you always have the the uh people who are like yeah but if you give it to me i can make sure everyone sees it but it's right. like yeah but you're making money off of our creative input right okay? and and matt and i have had this discussion a lot about you know you know, we, we made uh, some projects that we're holding on and we're mm -hmm. not going to hand them out until you know, we find a good a good deal, which, again, with the Internet, it makes it a lot easier for us to, you know, reach out to fans, reach out to people mm -hmm. and get our, our, our things out there. Yeah, yeah, it's it's really changed the world. I mean, I remember Annie DeFranco back in the day, man, she just she was she, they were sniffing after her you know we'll give you this record deal she's like well, why, why would i i'm doing fine like i don't really yeah. i'm playing huge shows i'm i'm good you know yeah it's uh, it really changed the game it's beautiful i mean um music's tough in the sense like what i just said with the laptop thing that's why i, I always look at music as i love it of course but it's like it's probably one of the biggest art forms that especially nowadays you could you could immediately counter like you could immediately like if somebody bigger was to hear a song get a, a demo tape from somebody they could have that song recreated in one night better you know what i mean yeah it's really yeah. it's it's so it, it, it's it's beneficial for like a, a more independent underground artist now you know they can at least get it out there and be like yeah Back in the you day, can you do a video on your iPhone. You exactly. Can, I mean, yeah, I did a few videos from from this my current record, um, just using license, you know, licensing clips basically yeah. and editing it together. And it's like, hey, I did that myself. <laughs> you yeah, know? yeah, yeah. I don't have a hundred thousand dollar budget, but I'll put it out there and 
You know, one of the another thing you've done like uh, Dark Cloud, you did Twisted Metal, and some other video games. You yeah. know, that's that's a medium that has definitely taken on a whole new life in the last maybe ten years. The video games, you know what I mean? Yeah, and they're bigger than movies and TV nowadays. For crying out loud, you know they are. They're you incredible. Know. You have? Did yeah. you have any any idea of seeing that coming, or is that just kind of a crazy? No. Hope? You know what I mean? Yeah, that's just, you know, the, the business is so strange. I always, uh, it, it's not been, uh, it's not been boring. That's for sure. Right, you just right. never know where your good's going to come from because, yeah. I mean, you just kind of suit up and show up. And I, I had a co, co-writer, somebody that I, I co-wrote a bunch of stuff with. He played live for me. Great, great composer, guitar player, like the most percussive guitar player I think I've ever played with in my life, like beautiful guitar player, just loved playing live with him. And uh, he started getting into composing. And then before I knew it, he's composing like the soundtracks for these huge, huge games. And then he started calling me like, Sam, you want to, you want to sing on God of War? You want to sing on Twisted Metal Black? You want to sing, yeah. you know, so he'd hire me to come in and sing on these games. And I, you know, you just say yes. I'm like, sure. Can you do like a Middle Eastern Lisa Gerard kind of, you know, ambient vocals, vibey, yeah. no lyrics, you know, just improv. I was like, sure, you know, yeah. just give turn the lights down in the studio and turn the reverb up and we'll see what we'll get. And so, yeah, I've gotten to do, I mean, I moved to Texas for a while and I got to perform. Um, I was one of the crazy diamonds in this epic Pink Floyd tribute band oh, yeah. we toured we played all the House of Blues venues from like um, Dallas to down to New Orleans and Houston and the whole laser light show experience I mean it was one of the most amazing musical experiences I've ever had and that just kind of came out of nowhere you know so I my my career has had lots of um twists and turns and you know Jam was just like what voiceover for a cartoon like yeah. you know who would expect that and, and just showing up and having an agent and saying yes and going on auditions and putting myself out there and 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 not giving up basically it's it's not been an easy road but uh I guess I'm tough to get rid of <laughs> you wouldn't want to get rid of you you wouldn't want to get rid of you, <laughs> you yeah. know I so music is like your first love then kind of really that's where it really started yeah. and it's beautiful yeah. that you can still kind of you know a lot of like I, we tell Al, I, will, I don't tell Alex but me and Alex yeah. often talk about like we we all wear these different hats just to be able to do the thing that we want to do you know what I oh, mean yeah yeah and I think exactly. that's really cool that yeah you can still you know what I mean you still get to do every, all that stuff is really dope yeah, you know, I I figured out a long time ago because it has been it's been a difficult road, and sometimes it's really hard to get paid. And fans think that you're, you know, you've got this huge mansion on the hill, right. and they see you at comic cons, and you know, and there there have been wonderful wins over the years, but the show business is is feast or famine, you know, unless you're like Beyonce, <laughs> you know, it just <laughs> is, and and you're constantly investing back into your business and that type of thing. So, I just decided a long time ago that I'm a lifer yeah. I can't like I can't not do it I can't not do it it's 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 something that is in me since I was a little little kid and yeah. I saw this performer when I was seven and I knew I had a complete epiphany at seven years old that that's what I wanted to do and I didn't even really know that I could sing mm. but I could and that's probably why I had such a connection with it because it was already in me but um I mean, this is what I've done my whole life. So I, I, yeah, I can't not do it. I will always be involved in it in some capacity, I imagine. And God willing, you know, absolutely. Makes me happy. <laughs> That's the thing I tell people all the time, follow like what your passions, what you love, because at the end of it, it all ends the same way. Nobody lives forever. You know what I mean? So you, true. Might well attempt it, you know what I mean? Yeah. I will have, I will never have any regrets. I I've, gone for it i have yeah. literally just in some ways sacrificed my life on the altar of my ambitions but you know i have amazing memories and um and i've met incredible people and i've got to be a part of some really beautiful things and and uh you know i just sort of jumped i think it, it's such a faith walk in this business and you just you have to take risks and it's not for the faint of heart, you know, when people are like, well, what are you going to do? How are you going to pay your bills? It's like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm 
I don't know. It's going to work right. out. Somehow it always works out, right? Yeah. But I want to do that. That's what I want exactly. to do. That lights up my soul. Like, I want to do that. So, yeah. yeah. Like I said, life is short, so. You know, you, you do a lot of conventions, and I often hear people say that they don't they don't even realize how big that that what 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 people love them for, so to speak, you know what I mean, or know them mm -hmm. for, um, so to speak, like is a big deal until like they start doing conventions and stuff like that and get to get out there and meet the, the fans that love it. You know, what yeah. I mean? do you remember the first convention you did? And it, it, was there an overwhelming feeling when you seen all these people come up and you're like, whoa, I didn't even know that, you know, it was that much of an impact. And then here, you you know, you got yes. people to change their life and stuff. Yeah. I, I remember the first one I got invited to was, um, I think it was called Fan Fest and it was in Secaucus, New Jersey. And they were the loveliest people and they reached out to me and they're like, so we're having, um, it's a Star Wars convention and Mark Hamill is the guest of honor and we would love to have you as a guest. And I was like, to, to sing? And they were like, no, 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 for, for Gem and Transformers. I was like, what do I do? Yeah. They were like, just kind of like, I had no idea. I'd never yeah. been to a comic con before. And so anyway, long story short, I, I said, can I fly my guitar player out and do a concert as well? And they were like, we would love that. So they flew yeah. out my guitar player. That was actually Mike Reagan, the guy that I was just talking about. And uh, we put on a concert and I sold my little CD. And, um, and then I signed uh, gem pictures and transformers pictures for the fans. And I, and I was surrounded by like 20,000 stormtroopers, but so many of them knew the show. They'd grown up with gem and transformers. And I, that was my first experience. And I was like, this is hilarious and amazing. And like, what is happening? You know, it was so fun. And it was getting to meet the grown up gem kids because I didn't get to meet them when I was doing the show. And now they were whatever age they were. And we were finally get to, getting to meet in person and I was getting to hear, you know, what the shows had meant to them. And yeah. And, and for, so from that, I got invited to more things and, and, and I've just, what an opportunity to get out there and, and meet the fans face to face. Like whoever thought of comic cons is a genius because it's, it's been so much fun. A genius and a financial genius. You know, yeah, that too, right? <laughs> for sure. Right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, if I they can't do it right. If they do it right, they do well. The only the only business I can think of that's came in the last few years that is bigger than conventions is the weed game. You know what I mean? Getting legalized <laughs> everywhere. You know what I mean? That, and, true. And Funko Pops. And Funko oh. Pops, too. Yeah. Funko Pops. Yeah. <laughs> Great idea. Huge. Yeah. Little nuggets of things for, I mean, brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know you've composed a few films too. Do you, uh, you the, the, I'm assuming that uh, you love doing them, of course, but I assume it's, there's more when you're doing your own music, it's probably you like enjoy that a little bit more or just because it's more of a personal vibe with your own music. Whereas for like a project or a film, I mean, you bring a little bit of something into it, of course, but like, right. You right. have free. You kind of have free reign if you're doing your own music, where you have to kind of follow yeah. a structure with a yeah. score or something. Yeah. I mean, I did. Um, I remember I sang a bunch of songs on a soundtrack uh, for a film called Crazy Six back in the '90s, yeah. and I had fans for years reaching out, like, "How do I get that soundtrack? Where's that soundtrack?" Um, they just released it actually on um, on vinyl not that long ago, and remastered right. it and everything. And yeah. And that was really fun to sing, you know, somebody else's music that I really enjoyed singing and, yeah. um, you know, and then, and then it is a whole different thing to put a band together and do my own, my own stuff live and you know, record my own records. It's just all part of the creative, the creative web of stuff. It's like the, the Sam multiverse. <laughs> You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all the different creative and creative things that I get to do. Yeah. I, I can't say, well, probably writing my own music and getting to perform my own music. I mean, that, that feels good, yeah. but I have to say singing with the Pink Floyd tribute band. I mean, that really was like my rock star moment, you know, getting to sing great gig and getting to sing all these iconic songs with, you know, packed houses at the house of blues with people with their cell phones singing every song and freaking out and cheering for us and just like wow what 
you know, I mean, it was obviously it was a tribute band, but we were we were damn good. We really were good. If I don't say so myself, a bunch of talented, really talented people I got to work with. So, I mean, that was that was incredible. Like it's so much of it has just been such a joy and it's also different, you know, so. Yeah. yeah. Are you working on new music right now? No, I am. I'm actually um, <clears throat> putting a see this is such a journey i'm 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 reimagining my voiceover stuff and i and everybody has to have a voiceover booth now in their house and yeah. it's been a little tricky a little more frustrating than i really realized i didn't realize what i was getting into because now as a voice actor you have to literally drive the ship you're you know you're producing you're directing you're you're engineering your own sessions <clears throat> so i've been having i built my booth and I've been test driving it and um, it's a lot of stops and starts, but that's what I'm focused on right now is getting my booth really good and doing some new demos because the, uh, the life of a voice actor is mostly auditioning. Like that's sure. what we do. We, we audition. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's just trying to, um, you know, just get really competitive uh, with my my sound and all of that so I've got some help which is great but it's it's been a journey I'm not gonna lie sure. when people are like I want to do voiceovers you're like well let me just tell you <laughs> not only you, you have to be an actor but it's just it's a whole thing getting getting set up and you know getting your sound good and all of that so I, I think if I knew what I was walking into I would have I would have uh, maybe really procrastinated. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the competition element of it is probably worse than it's ever been, because like you <laughs> said, you can just, you can get some equipment and, and build something in your house. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And then you get auto tune. And if you want to, you can change, you can fit, you know, level it out. You could make it deeper. You could, you know, do all types of crazy stuff with technology. When I had an agent in LA, Back in the day, I was probably only auditioning like twice a week if I was lucky. Um, now, it, the whole game has changed. I mean, mm. there I can be auditioning all day long if I want, and that's great. And that's, I love that. I just want to work and want to be creative. And so, so I'm excited about that. It's, it's, it's leveled the playing field in a lot of ways. It's yeah. just like the internet did with music and all of that. So, Yes, it's more competitive, but I feel like, you know, if stuff's meant to be yours, it's going to be yours. I mean, who'd have thought I would get Gem? It was meant, I was meant to do it. You know, that's the only yeah. way I can think of it because I was uh, very new to, very new to the voiceover world. I'd been in the business a long time and I'd been singing professionally for years, but they heard something in me and, and it was meant to be mine. So, yeah. so I think if I can, you know, anybody who's trying to get into a creative field like that, you know, obviously you've got to work hard and you've got to learn your craft and be diligent and all of that. But also you got to let go because if it's meant to be yours, it'll be yours. And if not, it'll be something else. So for sure, for sure. Yeah. You had it. You also had a little stint in horror, too. I did. Yes. Debbie. <laughs> that Debbie and <laughs> Summer Camp Nightmare. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Very yeah. fun movie. Very, I've had, uh, uh, you know, I got that over here too. Oh my the gosh, old, that's so funny. The old VHS, yeah. The old VHS. I, hell yeah, I love it. You know, <laughs> any fun memories from that or? Oh yeah, I mean, I was just like an idiot teenager. We actually got to. <laughs> <laughs> it was while I was doing Gem, and we got to. Um, we filmed it at a real summer camp up in uh, Trancas Canyon, in the Santa Monica Mountains. And we stayed overnight there. And so we're just a bunch of cute girls and cute guys. And we're all like flirty with each other and just, you know, being ridiculous. And put, I remember we put on like a dance rehearse, dance recital for, for the boys. Like, I don't know what we were thinking. We were just, you know, <laughs> we were just <laughs> teenagers yeah. filming this movie. And um, yeah, Chuck Connors, the rifle man was in it. And yeah. um yeah, it was it was really fun. A bunch of kids were in it. I mean, we were all kids, but then we had younger kids, and and uh, so I was doing that, and I was doing gem at the same time, which was which was pretty awesome. Yeah. So everybody's got to have like a a horror movie, a B horror movie in their arsenal, right? 
agree completely. I agree completely. He, he no. got plenty between the two of us. Oh yeah, yeah. I have too many, probably. Right. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, Samantha, Samantha, this was fantastic. We usually end with oh. one. We usually end with one last question. Okay. Um, we got a lot of artists, uh, musicians, uh, you know, filmmakers, authors, all the comedians, all different types of people listen to. Do you have any advice for anybody that might, we kind of touched a little bit on it a few moments ago, but advice for anybody that might be found themselves in a rut or found finds themselves discouraged, any advice you might give to them to kind of keep their morale up or keep them going? Yeah, I mean, because I've that I've been that girl, so, and that's that's a part of the journey. You have an insane passion for it and a love for it, and that you're not delusional. That that outside of your family and friends, people have like said, "Yeah, you're you're pretty good at this." I mean, take the temperature and make sure that you're not, you know, like those American Idol contestants that are like, "I'm the next American Idol," and they are tone deaf, you know. But I mean, if you really have a passion for it just it's it's persistence it's consistency it's just stay at it and and um and just don't give up you know don't give up I think there's a line and so didn't Seinfeld say something like you stand on the line long enough you're gonna get to the front yeah. and I always remember that I was like you know when it's your time it's your time and you just never know my dad used to say every no you get you're one no closer to a yes there's a lot of rejection in the business, but if you really, really love it, you just got to hang in there, you know. Your dad's a wiser man than Seinfeld, that's for sure. <laughs> and uh, to go with the Seinfeld line, bring a coat with you in that line because you might be waiting a long time, you know what I mean? <laughs> but definitely, I'm with it. You might be Submit waiting a long time. <laughs> yeah. But Samantha, thank you very much. This was a, real, a lot of fun. We really appreciate you coming on the show. I really appreciate you guys too. This was lovely. Thank you for having me. And uh, stay, stay truly outrageous. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. All right, have a good night over there. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye bye. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the lovely, the great Samantha Newark. Gem herself on the Boombastic cast. What a glorious thing that is. You know what I mean? Uh, a lot of fun. She was a sweetheart and uh, we had a lot of good stories, you know, uh, straight from the childhood. You know, when she said that thing in the beginning about, you know, the just being an 80s kid myself. And I know Alex feels the same way. It's like you would wake up. It was a reason to wake up for crying out loud that Saturday morning. It's like you could sleep in, but you want to wake up to catch the cartoons, Jem being one of them, kick ass, punk rock. I, you know, I guess it's glamour rock up in this mother trucker. Um, very cool, very cool. What you thinking, Hawk? What you thinking over there? Oh, oh, I I I'll never forget one of my favorite childhood memories. And whenever I bring it up to my 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 parents, they have to laugh. Because oh, really? every Saturday morning, okay, I'd wake up bright and early. You know, like I knew exactly when when Saturday morning cartoons were going to start, and of course, my parents had a rule. Okay, I could not watch anything without their permission. So I would, you know, wake up bright early, and I would run into uh, the bedroom and like, mom, 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 <laughs> yeah. mom. And she's like, "What, Alex? Like, uh, can I go down and watch Saturday morning cartoons?" And and of course, usually my mom being groggy is like, y yeah, that's fine. I'm like, thanks. And then I just run as quickly as I could, went down. And like 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 she said that you know we didn't have DVR, we, uh, we didn't have, I mean, we had to get it when it, it was being uh, showcased. So I would run down, turn it on, sit down, and I'm like, yeah, I can't wait. And then you know watch them, and I mean. <sighs> I'm not. I'm not throwing shade. Uh, okay. I probably, but I'm not throwing shade All to right. a lot of the animation that comes out now. But uh, as as an '80s kid, and I think Matt can agree that I think '80s cartoons were some of the best. Eight, '80s and '90s cartoons were some of the best animation I thought. And maybe it's just the nostalgia talking, but. Uh, it was a lot of fun, and, and and it looked like, you know, those who put them together really cared about what they were creating. 
Yeah, I'm with you on that. There's a yeah, I, there's something about it. I don't know if it's because we grew up in that generation, but there's something about that style of cartoon that just sits with us. Even if they you see something nowadays made in that that like style, it's like it, it's it's home cooking. You know what I mean? It, it's comfort food. You know what I mean? It's one of those things. And uh, I do think it's a generational thing uh, in the sense of like, I think like my nieces and nephews, what they watch now, they're going to have that feeling in 20 years about that stuff. I still think ours is better. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. but, but that's just, they're, they're going to feel that way about their stuff too. Um, yeah, but we're right there wrong. <laughs> but they, we, yeah, I mean, that's the big problem at the end of the day is that we're right there wrong for sure. Um even action figures, you know, I think we talked about this not too long ago, you know, like, like I got like over here, we got, we got, we got some slashes going over here. Like they don't make cool action figures like that anymore. The coolest slash I have was a gift from the great Alexander the Hawk, of course, but that's boxed up. Yeah. And then, you know, we got some metal head up in here too. Like they don't make action figures like this anymore, but kids of this generation will probably go, you know what? I don't like those action figures. My action figures are better. And like I, like you said, you know, we're right, they're wrong. That's just how it goes. But the mature thing to do is let them believe that they're right. You know what I mean? That's the mature, the mature thing to do in a situation like that. But, but yeah, this was an absolute pleasure. Uh, like I said, royalty up in here, straight up royalty. Wow. Samantha Newark is incredibly, incredibly awesome, sweet, lovely, beautiful, just a, a staple of childhood, you know what I mean? And it, it's so. I'm, 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 I'm sorry, Matt. I got cut you off. I just have to say this. She was a gem. She was a gem, as we're, as William <laughs> as William Shatner would say, she was a gem, and definitely, and she still is a gem. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, the Shatner never gave us no compliment, but. We'll say, you know, the chat man was hanging with our boy, Steven Joyner. Shout out Steve Joyner uh, made this interview possible. Much love. Um, but hell yeah, man, that was a very fun episode for sure. You know, we'll have her back if she ever wants to come back on to talk about some new stuff. Um, oh, I, 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 unfortunately, I forgot to ask her about where she, where people can go check out her music and stuff. Um, well, you know, her name's Samantha Newark. Um Definitely go Google it because uh, the music's good stuff. You know what I mean? And it, peep it, support that. Um, you go to a convention, you see her at a convention, go buy her booth, buy a picture. She probably has music there. Grab it, tell her that you, you heard her on the Boom Bass to cast. And uh, now we're, we're, that makes us Saturday morning cartoons too. You know what I mean? So it's a beautiful thing. But yeah, definitely, she's super cool. Everybody we have on the show is super cool, and she's right there with the rest of them. So what that means is when you see her out and about in the wild at a convention or maybe she's performing somewhere, you buy yourself a little extra merch that evening, if you know what I'm saying. You hook it up. Support these people that supported your brain while you developed as a kid and entertained you and took you away from the woes of the world. It's almost like, you know, cartoons are almost like the comfort in between the madness of the world in a child, you know what I mean? It's like they kind of slowly, gradually bring almost real life issues to you, but in a comedic, cartoonish way for a kid to kind of be able to start to accept, start to develop, get an opinion, you know what I mean? Um, cartoons are very influential, very important, you know what I mean? Um, much love, much love for sure. So with that being said, if you enjoyed this episode, which we know you did, because we did it was fantastic stuff, uh, tune into another one. Hopefully you're watching the Boom Basta cast on the YouTube network. If not, you are maybe listening to it on a Spotify or an iTunes or an iHeartRadio, perhaps. Um, I heard iHeartRadio is one of our big, a lot of people listen to it there as I burp. Um, but also I know, I know if you're a true king and true queen, of this universe, this world, this world earth that we live in. If you're a king or a queen, I know you're watching it on the Patreon. You don't put up with that weight and bull shtick. You know what I mean? You just right jump right into that boom bastic streaming Patreon page. And by golly, you're watching that stuff with your eyeballs in your ears, not just one or the other. 
and your your third eye. When you're on Patreon, you get the third eye treatment too, for sure. Right there in the middle of your forehead, it opens up. You don't even know it's there. It's been hiding the whole time, um, and that's truly how you watch it on the Boombastic streaming. But uh, we love everybody out there. We love all our guests. We love each other, and uh, we thank everybody for listening. We'll catch all y'all on the next episode of the Boombastic Cast. Peace. Mm.